The FFA motto is learning to do, doing to learn, earning to live, living to serve. From what I've heard, this motto really seems to apply to the new greenhouse program at the West Central Area School in Barrett. I called up Eric Sawatsky, the ag instructor at the school, to find out more. And he said, come for a visit. Thanks for letting us come to visit Eric. Thank you so much for coming out here. Now, tell us about yourself and your background. Sure, so I grew up in central Minnesota, a dairy kid. Uh, I grew up on a dairy farm and got involved in FFA. And after high school, I decided I wanted to become an ag teacher. I really enjoyed what we did in FFA. And so the motto, everything that we do is such a great learning environment. And so I started teaching and now I've been doing this for 15 years and the last six here at West Central Area Schools. How did you get started with the idea of building a greenhouse here? So I was lucky enough to be at Dasso Cocado Schools prior to this who had a greenhouse. And so I taught there uh, and, and had a, a wonderful group of horticulture classes and, and college level courses that we even taught at that greenhouse. And so I knew what hands-on plant science really could be. When I moved up to this area, we looked at the school and just saw that there wasn't a hands-on plant science. And it was a very crop production heavy part of the state. So it was very obvious to me that we needed to have that hands-on opportunity available to them. How did you go about getting support in the community for a greenhouse or horticulture program? So we've got a lot of community members that dove in really early on. Uh, I've got a couple that are here today that will do a great job at telling us about that. What were the goals of building the greenhouse? So initially it was all about plant science education. We knew that we had students that were going to work with plants in their future careers out in this part of the state. So we needed to have hands-on live action work, that learning to do, doing to learn aspect. We can't learn this just from a textbook. We're not going to excite students about plant science from a textbook. So we have to have this in addition to all the text work that's, that's done too. And so we started with that and then it became a very big um, changing point when some of the community members said yes, but we also we want to get more local food movement happening. And so we need to have fresh food in Western Minnesota. Is there a way that we could use the greenhouse to grow vegetables and fruits and actually be available for our residents in the area? And that's really where a lot of the groundswell support came from. There was both the agriculture farm production side and then this need for direct local food that really developed a lot of interest and support. So how did you decide what kind of greenhouse and what size to build? Yeah, so after having already spent a, a, over a decade teaching in agriculture, I had a lot of great connections, many great ag teachers and FFA advisors in Minnesota, a lot of experts that have had greenhouses, some that are building their second greenhouse in their career, and so I reached out to a number of those. Uh, the one that I, we actually did a visit to was Chisago Lakes. They had a, a retiring ag teacher who had a greenhouse his entire career. He went to get a new greenhouse built before he retired, uh, and we decided decided at that point it's a, a local Twin Cities company, AJ Lauer company, to go with them because of the quality they did there. Uh, and we haven't uh, questioned that decision from the very beginning to the, even today. So we had to come up with a, a pretty good number. It was a, it's an expensive greenhouse. This is a, a, one of the most high-tech greenhouses that there are available with a lot of bells and whistles to it. And it was intended to be that way so that the students can work on plants and not be spending their time watering plants, shading all the time, they could be actually doing the works, propagation and cuttings and everything else. To get that took a lot of funding, so we, we established a budget initially, a goal of $300,000 to raise, with some big grant dollars being the first part of that. But I will tell you, the very first person that came to me was a local farmer, and he handed me a check for $1,000. And he said, we have to invest in this. This is the most important thing that we can do for our students. And it was a groundswell from there that brought in 65 different funders that paid for the greenhouse. So it was a mixture of different things that happened. The initial group that started it was, we have five different communities in our school district all having strong Lions Clubs. And our Lions Clubs got involved in this process of raising the funds for hunger relief. They also had an international grant program that had a $100,000 grant. And they said this falls right in line with that program and their goals. And so we were able to capitalize on that. But then I spent time during uh, about a two and a half year period writing grants, different uh, organizations. And then we had different types of um, grants that even farmers were able to get for us through nomination programs and whatnot. So the community did the work to get the money brought in from all these different aspects. 
from the very beginning on day one, uh, we had started out with some really strong supporters. We had Debbie Lacey, uh, who is also not just a Lions Club member, but also the coordinator of the local food shelf. She's been involved since day one in, in our community meetings and our planning. Uh, and then Sue Kalbike is also a, a Lions Club individual who has been a big leader regionally and even gone on the international trips with Lions International and made those connections to help us build that groundswelling support.